Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor P. Baskaredi, Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. In the present module of the paper, Outlines of Indian History, you are going to learn about the sources for the study of Indian history. It is known that history is a subject deals with the past events. We are knowing the past events with the help of sources. The sources for the reconstruction of history of any country and also India is vary. In the present module, you are going to learn about various sources and how the sources are helping in reconstruction of Indian history and culture since the beginning to present day. The learning objectives of the study are to analyze various source materials for the reconstruction of Indian history. For example, the literary sources for ancient, medieval and modern Indian history, the narrative accounts of foreign travelers and their importance, to know the importance of archaeological sources like material remains, monuments, inscriptions and coins. Let us start with an introduction about the recovery of the past with the help of literary sources. It is known that India has a long history unlike many other countries in the world. India has a culture fully conscious of its own antiquity that is a culture which indeed exaggerated that unity and claimed not to have fundamentally changed for many thousands of years. But one of the defects of our, our history is the absence of any regular historical chronicle. In this regard, Professor Arsim Mazundar, one of the prominent historian, he wrote in the 1950s that prior to the 13th century Christian era, we possess no historical text of any kind much less such a detailed narrative as we possess in the case of Greece, Rome or China. He cited 13th century because that was when North India, succumbing to Muslim rule, attracted the attention of Persian writers who took keen note the chronicles and trumps of Islam. Even al biruni who visited the India along with uh, the invasion of Muhammad Ghazni, he said that Hindus do not pay much attention to the historical order of the thing. That was the problem. Therefore, we have to depend upon a large number of sources for the reconstruction of history and culture, which occurred in incidental literary sources and also incidental archaeological materials. From the beginning of 18th century AD, the European scholars they started the recovery of the past with the help of various source materials available in India itself. Among that, Pargeter was the first to make a bold attempt to coordinate the varying details of the royal dynasties before the Mahabharata war. Later, various attempts were made to recover the past history with the help of available sources. Yet, we are not in a position to firmly grasp to continuity of political history of India up to the beginning of 6th century before Christian era. However, efforts were made by the Britishers to explore and interpret the history of India with various possible literary sources which occurred in the religious uh, uh, literature as well as in incidental literary sources. In that, the definite results in this field were made by Sir William Jones, a linguistic genius of Britishers. In 1784, William Jones founded the Asiatic Society of Bengal. After that, they started a journal, uh, Asiatic Research. In the uh, Journal of Asiatic Researchers, the real steps in realizing the India's past were taken with the help of various sources. Jones himself translated the Kalidasa's Abhijnana Shakuntala and also Gita Govinda in the year 1792. Besides Jones, another scholar, Charles Wilkins, has taken up the first translation of Sanskrit work, Bhagavad Gita, into English in the year 1784, followed by Hitopadesha in 1787. 
Thus, Jones and Wiggins were truly considered as the fathers of Indology. After Jones and Wiggins, Antiquil Duperan, a Persian scholar, published the translation of Upanishads. Another notable contribution to the Indian history was made by Max Muller, a German scholar. He translated Rigveda and also the series of sacred books of the East in English. Later on, James Bishop, the secretary of the Asiatic Society of Bengal, interpreted for the first time the earliest Brahmi script and was able to read the edicts of Asoka in the year 1837. The literary efforts by all these scholars created a curiosity among the scholars and adventurers to probe further into the history and culture of India. It resulted in the establishment of archaeological department in the year 1862. Alexander Cunningham was appointed as the head of the archaeological survey. He devoted every minute he could spare from his duties to the study of the material remains of ancient India in between 1862 to 1885. Thus, Cunningham is regarded as the father of Indian archaeology. Lord Karjan, the Viceroy of India at the time, has reformed and enlarged the Archaeological Survey of India in the year 1902 and appointed Sir John Marshall as the Director General. Sir John Marshall excavated and discovered the world-famous sites of Harappa and Mahanjaro representing the Indus Valley Civilization in the year 1922. With the revival of Archaeological Survey of India, its different activities like the excavations, explorations, epigraphy, numismatics, monuments, etc. have been taken up on serious note and these activities have proved useful for the reconstruction of Indian history. Thus, with the contribution made by various scholars in 18th and 19th centuries, they brought volumes of sources in the form of literature, archaeological and several others. These sources now they are very much useful to reconstruct the history and culture of India in all its facets. The sources of Indian history, it is known that several sources have contributed for the study of Indian history and culture. These sources are conventionally divided into two categories for better understanding. The first one is archaeological sources and the other category is literary sources. The literary sources can be divided into indigenous and foreign accounts. The literary sources can be divided into indigenous and foreign accounts. The indigenous are many and uh, the indigenous sources are uh, subdivided into religious, secular and several others. The religious literatures include the Brahminical literature of the past, Buddhist and Jaina texts. The archaeological materials are many and vary which they includes the material remains, monuments, inscriptions and numismatics. All these sources form an important and authentic source for knowing the history of ancient, medieval and modern periods. With this introduction, let us start how the literary sources are helpful for understanding the history of India. For the reconstruction of India, the literary sources are available from the time of Vedics, which they can be considered as religious literature. The first literary sources of India or Samhitas includes four Vedas. In that, Rigveda contains prayers, while the later Vedic texts comprise not only prayers, but also rituals, magic formulas, mythological stories, and the Upanishads contain philosophical speculations. Besides this, the Rigveda provides information about the history and the political system of the Aryans. The later Vedas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas, Upanishads, Vedangas all reveal the remarkable changes that the Aryan society undergone subsequently in that particular period. Besides, the Smritis like Manusmriti, Yagnivalka Smriti, Burhasmriti, Narada Smriti, etc., they are also reveal the social and religious conditions of India between 200 BCE to 6th century Christian era. The great Indian epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata, 
are also useful which they throw light on the living conditions of the Aryans during the later Vedic age. They are the authentic sources to know about various aspects of Indian polity, society, economy, ways of life and various traditions. The Puranas were there, another important of source of information which they provide various aspects of religion and political history. The Puranas particularly provide the dynastic history of ancient India up to the beginning of Gupta rule. The Puranas have a accounts of mountains, rivers, uh, places which are also useful for the study of historical geography of India. Thus, the religious literature of ancient India starting from Vedas up to Puranas and its allied literature, various commentaries on these works, they are all helpful to know about the history of India as well as its multi facets of culture. Besides the indigenous religious literature, the Buddhistic literature also form an important source to know about the history of ancient period. The sacred scriptures of Buddhists are in Pali language. The Buddhist canonical literature is referred as three pitakas. It is known that the Vinaya Pitaka is the first one which deals with rules and regulations with the Buddha promulgated for the future discipline of monks and nuns. The other Sutta Pitaka consists chiefly of discourses delivered by the Buddha. Abhidhamma Pitaka, it contains the profound philosophy of the Buddha's teachings. The Jataka stories of Buddhists deal with the previous births of Buddha and throws invaluable light on social and economic conditions. The Milinda Panha, another important work of the Buddhists, it is a dialogue on various philosophical issues between King Milinda, that is Manandar, and the monk Nagasena. The Sri Lankan chronicles like the Deepavamsa and Mahavamsa, they contain a historical come, a mythical account of Buddha's life, the Buddhistic councils, the Mauryan Emperor Asoka, the kings of Sri Lanka and the spread of Buddhism. Besides, we can quote the other works of the Buddhistic scholars like Nagarjuna, Asanga, Buddha Gosha and the literary work Lalita Vistara and many others contain historical and geographical references about the ancient India. Besides the Buddhist literary sources, Jainism which gained momentum in the same period as a religious movement, they also started compiling of Jain literature. They, the Jain literature also contain many references of the ancient India and culture. The Jain literature is written in Ardhamagadi form of Prakrit and known as Tuval Angas compiled in 6th century Christian era. They contain many historical statements and references to the kingdoms of North India. In the field of non-canonical literature, commentaries to the Jain texts also form the most significant part. They also include the stories and historical works like Badra Bahu Charita, Parishista Parvana of Hemachandra, semi-historical works like Prabhanda Chintamani, etc. All these literary sources form an authentic source, though they are occasional references, they are useful in reconstruction of Indian history, both political, religious and various cultural facets. Besides the religious literature, we have a bulk of secular literature which was composed in ancient India and medieval periods. They also throw a flood of light on history and culture of the contemporary ages. The secular literature of ancient India is vast. It includes biographical works of historical persons, historical texts, literary compositions, dharma sutras, and the writings of foreigners. Purely literary works as dramas and poems and works on polity, economy and grammar carried on by the scholars of ancient India are also of valuable help 
in reconstructing history and culture. Among this class, the Kautilya's Arthashastra is important one. Among the secular literary of the ancient India, we have to quote the best example among them is the Kautilya's Arthashastra, which throws a flood of light on polity and economy of the Mauryan age. The Mudra Rakshasa of Vishakhazatta, it is also another important of this class of work, which it is useful to know about the conditions of the Mauryas. Besides, several literary works of the ancient period, like Mahabhasya of Patanjali, Malavika Gamikutram of Kalidasa, Mrucha Katika of Sodraka, Dasakumara Charitra of Dandi, Neeti Sara of Kamandaka, we quote, these are few classical examples which throws useful light on the contemporary history and culture. Besides, particularly the works of Kalidasa include Abhijnana Shakuntala, Vikramara Siya, Raghuvamsa, Kumara Sambhava and Megadota. They provide us with glimpses of the social and cultural life in the age of the Guptas. Besides this type of literary works, it is known that the early medieval kings attracted writers and poets and some of whom they started the composition of biographical works in praise of their royal patterns. Among the biographical works, the famous biographics are Banabhattas Harsacharita, Vakpatis the Prakrut Gandavaha, Bilhanas Vikramanka Devacharita, Chand Bhattais Pudvi Raja Charita. These are the classical examples which they contain many references about the achievements, the greatness and various aspects of that particular kings. Among these biographical works, we have to quote the best example of the earliest historical writing is Raja Tarangani, written by Kalhana. The Raja Tarangani provides a connected account of the kings of Kashmir from the earliest ones of legend to the historical rulers of 12th century AD. In addition to Sanskrit sources, we have some of the earliest Tamil texts found in the corpus of Sangam literature. The Sangam literature throw light on the political, social, religious and cultural history of South India during the age of Pandya, Chera and Cholas. Likewise, various source materials are available to know the history of ancient India, which was purely an indigenous one. They fled much on history of ancient India in all its aspects. Besides the indigenous sources, the foreign accounts also form an authentic source and a supplementary source to know about the history of that period. So far, we discussed the availability of indigenous literature since the time of the Vedas and how the literary works of that period helpful for the reconstruction of ancient Indian history and culture. Besides indigenous literature for the reconstruction of ancient history, the foreign accounts are also helpful in similar way to know about various unknown aspects of ancient history. Among the foreign works, we have to start with the Greek accounts. The Greek and Roman Chinese visitors who came to India either as travelers or religious converts, they left behind accounts of the things what they saw. The earliest references to India in Greek texts dates from 5th century before Christian era and their frequency increases thereafter. Among the foreign accounts of ancient India, one of the most famous work is the Indica of Megasthenes. The Indica furnishes valuable information about the system of Mauryan administration, social and economic activities. The Greek 
and latent texts referring to India includes the works of Arian, Strabo, Pliny, and Periplus of the Eritrean Sea. Many Chinese monks made a long and arduous overland journeys to India from 5th century Christian era onwards. Among the Chinese travelers, the best known is the account of Fahian and Huensa. Fahian describes social, religious, and economic conditions in the age of the Guptas. Huensa, who visited in the beginnings of the 7th century, he presents a similar account of India in the age of Harsha. Later, the series of Arab accounts starts with the Islamic advent of India in the 8th century. The Muslim writers, particularly the Suleiman and Al Masudi, left brief accounts of India. Al Biruni, another important Islamic writer who came to India with the Sultan Muhammad of Ghazni, he wrote authentic account on India in the 11th century AD. His work, Tahik e Hind, covers a large number of topics including Indian scripts, sciences, geography, astronomy, astrology, philosophy, literature, beliefs, customs, religions, festivals, rituals, social organization, and law, etc. With this discussion, I hope you may understood the availability of various literatures includes religious, secular and foreign accounts and how these accounts are helpful in understanding the history of ancient India. Now we may move to the sources for the medieval Indian history. It is known that the Muslim conquest of North India was affected towards the end of 12th century. The medieval period which starts from the invasion of the Muslims is characterized by the rise and fall of the Delhi Sultanate, Vijayanagara Empire, Bahamani Kingdom, the Mughal Empire. Fortunately, for the medieval period, there is abundant literary source materials. Among the various source materials, we can quote the fundamental, the Persian scholars of Turkish period and their contributions for historiography. Among the important Persian chronicles, Amir Kusru, Barani, Isami, Iban Batuta, Ferista and others are important. Among the important chronicles of the medieval period, Tariki Sindh of Mir Muhammad Qasim is important one. It describes the history of Sindh from Arab conquest to Akbar. Amir Kusru, the prince of poets, was the poet laureate, rose to fame under Balban, served the Kiljis and lived to enjoy the patronage of Giyazuddin Tughlaq. His work, Kajain Universal Fatuh, is the official history of Allahuddin campaigns. His works are of special importance since he was an eyewitness of the most of the events of the day. The Tariki Firoz Shahi of another Persian scholar Barani is the history of the Delhi Sultanate from Balban to Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Iban Batuta, a famous Moorish traveler, visited India during Muhammad bin Tughlaq. His account of Delhi Sultanate from Kutubuddin Aibak to Muhammad bin Tughlaq is largely a result of his experience and acquaintances in India. Ferista is the prince of Muslim historians. He gives a general history of Muslim rule in India starting from 10th to 16th century. It is known that with the declining of the Delhi Sultanate, particularly during the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, it paved the way for the establishment of Vijayanagara and Bahamni kingdoms in south. The sources of Vijayanagara Empire are many. For the study of Vijayanagara Empire, we have number of source materials, which includes the literary works of Vidyarana, Kalaj Jnana, Amukta Maleda, Madhura Vijayam, Salu Umsha Vijayam, Krishna Raya Vijayam, Vardhambika Parinayam, Achyuta Rama Vijayam, and the works of Astadya Gajas. All these are the mines of historical information 
to know about the history of Vijayanagara age. Besides that, several foreigners also visited the Vijayanagara Empire and they left accounts of the glory of the age. The rise of Vijayanagara and the Portuguese power attracted many foreigners to India. They left various accounts about the age of Vijayanagaras. Among that, Nicola Conte is the one, a Venetian merchant. He gives a description of the Vijayanagara court, its festivals, currency and other matters. Nikitin, a Russian merchant, he describes the conditions of the Bahamani kingdom under Muhammad Shah the Thought. Abdul Rajak, the Persian ambassador who visited Vijayanagara court, he witnessed the Mahanavi festival and he gives a graphic picture of the city with its fortifications, palaces, temples and other public buildings, administration and social life of South India. The Italian Ludovico di Vatama, the Portuguese Duretta Barbosa, Domingo Face, Fernando Nunic also visited Vijayanagara Empire and they left valuable accounts of South India. It is known that the beginning of 16th century marks a new era in the history of India that is the establishment of Mughal Empire by Babur in the year 1566. It is known that for the Mughal period we have various literary source materials which include the languages in Sanskrit, Arabic and Persian. Mughal period form one of the most glorious chapter in the history of medieval India. No period of Indian history so rich in its sources as the age of Mughals. Because many of the Mughal emperors were themselves men of letters and have left us with their records of events. Besides, the Mughal rulers also maintained court historiographers and encouraged them to write the official histories of their times. It is a known fact in the history that the 16th century marks a new beginning in its history that is the establishment of Mughal Empire. The Mughal period formed one of the most glorious chapters in the history of medieval India. No period of Indian history so rich in its sources as the age of Mughals. Many of the Mughal emperors were themselves men of letters and have left us their records of events. Besides, Mughal rulers maintained court historiographers and encouraged them to write the official histories of their times. Among the important works, the autobiographies of Babar, Jahangir, the letters of Aurangajeb, Jai Singh are the official and authentic sources of important. Abul Fazal, one of the important scholar of the age, he is credited with having provided the most comprehensive account of the Mughal Empire in two of his celebrated works, Akbarnama and the Aini Akbari. Besides the accounts of royal dynasties, the accounts of foreign travelers and merchants also form an authentic source of information to know about the Mughal period. Among that, William Hawkins, who came on a trade mission, has left an eyewitness account of Jangir's daily life, the Nauroj ceremony and court life. Henry Middleton has left a detailed account of the trade of the port of Surat. Sir Thomas Rowe, he gave a description of the cities and of the Mughal Emperor Jahangir and Princess is quite interesting. The English factor Peter Monday gave eyewitness accounts of local administration, river transport system and incidentally of the excellent inter-communal relations. Jean Baptiste Trevenet, a diamond merchant, he gave a valuable account of the cities and the towns and contemporary trade. Thevenet, one of the merchant visitor, has left an account of the towns, ports, customs and other administrative and revenue systems. Sir William knows, we can quote an example, he was deputed as an envoy on behalf of the East India Company to the court of Aurangajeb to secure the most favorable conditions of the English state. 
his account of south indian towns and mogal court is another valuable source of information thus all these sources throw light on political history conditions of the people the state of trade and industry and the history of religious institutions and various facets of medieval indian history thus for medieval period we have a bulk of literary sources which deal purely historical in nature and many of the literary works dealt with the the career and achievements of the kings and also various eyewitnesses of that period thus medieval period is very important to know about various aspects of history and culture from these literary sources now we may move to modern period modern period which is an important phase in the history of india where this period we have a bulk of source materials in various forms of literature there is a plenty of literary source material for the british period because the archives of india containing much information on rise and fall of british power many servants of english east india company have left accounts of their travel the biographies of national leaders and others are of great value for the history of freedom movement in that the archival sources or the authentic source records to know about various historical aspects of the india during the british period the archives both public as well as private from the most valuable source material for the modern industry they provide information on every aspect of indian history political administrative constitutional economic social cultural religious from the early days of the english settlements in india to the last date of the british raj the archives of the government of india mostly deposited in the national archives new delhi which are of primary value for the study of modern history the archives of the states are also valuable for the reconstruction of indian history particularly for the modern age the collections in the state archives comprises the records of the former british indian provinces the erstwhile princely states merged in the indian union after independence the foreign administrators other than those of the english the archives of judicial courts also constitute another class of valuable source material besides the official records the private archives also form an authentic source to know about the history of the modern period the private archives comprise the papers of individuals and families who played a significant note in the development of modern india its business and industrial corporations institutions societies associations who devoted to the political educational social religious and cultural activities the history of indian struggle for independence can be enriched by the use of the papers of eminent leaders of nationalist movement and records of organizations like the indian national congress which are available at nehru memorial museum and library new delhi so far we analyzed various source materials starting from vedic ages and how they form an important source for the study of ancient indian history and culture from that discussion it is a known fact that for the reconstruction of indian history of all periods we have a bulk of source materials if we utilize all these materials it will help a lot to know about every aspect of history and culture of all the ages since the inception and availability of the literary sources up to the present day besides the literary sources we have a bulk of archaeological source materials in various forms the archaeological materials 
or authentic source material for reconstruction of Indian history because the archaeological materials are directly related to the aspects of that particular age. The archaeological materials comprises of basically three groups material remains, inscriptions and coins. Let us start with the availability of material remains and how the material remains are helpful to know about the history of India, particularly the origin of our culture, civilization and how that civilization was changed from time to time. For this, we have the material remains from the inception of the man. The ancient Indians left innumerable material remains. The earliest trace of human existence in India so far discovered go back to the period between 3 lakh to 2 lakh be before Christian era. When archaeologists and historians speak of the prehistoric ages in man's past, they refer to the period when the primitive man was primarily a food gatherer or had just began a settled life for which no written records are available. Hence, the material remains of the early man available mostly in the form of stone tools and sometimes with the remains of animal he hunted, but they do not speak comprehensively about his life. However, the basic information provided by the tools of early man, his habitat, about the communities, still in the initial stages, social development, have led a certain conclusions about variations even in the earliest cultures and cultural don'ts. With the knowledge of the using the material remains for the reconstruction of Indian history, which began in the beginnings of the 18th century with the efforts of uh, European scholars, it resulted the establishment of Archaeological Survey of India in the year 1862 and its revival and expansion by Lord Curzon in the year 1902, the appointment of Sir John Marshall as the Director General paved the way for the several scientific expressions in India. Marshall expected and discovered the Indus civilization of Arapa and Mahansdaro. Later, several expressions and discoveries were conducted. The discovery of Ajanta and Ellora, the Buddhist stupas, viharas, cave and structural temples, forts, palaces, sites pertaining to Ramayana and Mahabharata have been added interesting and hitherto unknown information to our knowledge of Indian history. Thus, the monuments are an underlying witness of the artistic skill of India in various fields and testify its wealth and grandeur at different epochs of history. Particularly, the stupas, chaityas of the Buddhists, the Brahminical temples, its various components like pillars, wall paintings, statues, later on the construction of the ports, palaces and various ornaments found in these uh, expression sites have been found in different places in India. They constitute one of the most important source of information regarding the cultural history of ancient and medieval India. By utilizing all these available sources, it has been possible to throw light on the culture and civilization of India since 3rd millennium BC to modern day. Besides the material remains and monuments of various categories, the inscriptions, another group in the archaeological materials, form an authentic source of information to know about political, social, religious and cultural history of respective periods because the inscriptions were issued by directly either the royal families or the public. Whatever it may be, they contain a mine of information about these aspects. The particularly the inscription means any writing that is engraved on materials like stone, wood, 
metal, ivory, plaques, bronzes, bricks, clay shells or pottery, whatever it may be. The study of inscriptions is known as epigraphy. The inscriptions being contemporary records have provided a source of highest value for the reconstruction of political and cultural history of ancient and medieval India. Though the earliest recorded events of writing can be seen on the seals and the ceiling of the Harappan culture, these writings are yet to be deciphered. Several Indian and Western scholars have attempted to read the Indascript, but still it is in vain. In the group of archaeological sources, besides the material remains and the monuments, inscriptions form an authentic source of information which they contain various aspects of ancient and medieval history. Let us know when the, the inscriptions were started, from which period the inscriptions are available to know about the Indian history. It is known that an inscription is any writing that is engraved on stone, wood, metal, ivory plaques, bronze statues, bricks, shells, clay materials like pottery, etc. The study of inscriptions is known as epigraphy. The inscriptions being contemporary records have provided a source of highest value for the reconstruction of political and cultural history of ancient and medieval India. Though the earliest recorded evidence of writing can be seen on the seals and ceilings of the Harappan culture, these writings are yet to be deciphered. Several Indian and Western scholars have attempted to read the Indus writings, but still it is in vain. The inscriptions formerly two groups, they include stone inscriptions and copper plate grants. Have a look at the copper plate inscriptions and stone inscriptions and the inscriptions on temple walls. The earliest deciphered inscriptions in India belong to Mauryan Emperor Ashoka. The Ashokan edicts were first deciphered by James Prisop in the year 1837. The Ashokan edicts describe in detail Ashoka's views about Dhamma, an earnest attempt to solve some problems that a complex society faced. In the edicts, Ashoka refers himself as Devanam Priya, that is, beloved of gods. The scripts used in the Ashokan period were Brahmi, Karosti, Greek and Aramic scripts, whereas Prakrut was the common language which used in India. The Ashokan edicts are followed by the stone inscriptions pertaining to Shatavahana edge in south and Sungas in northern India. These inscriptions refer the name of the king, his titles, regnal years, reflecting the socio economic and religious conditions prevailing in the respective empire. Among the various inscriptions available for the ancient period, some inscriptions are peculiarly in process in nature, that is eulogized, recording the achievements of kings and conquests. Among this category, the best examples of the inscriptions are the Allahabad inscription of Samudragupta, Hathikumpa inscription of Karavela, Nasik inscription of Balasri, Girnar inscription of Rudradaman, I hold an inscription of Polakesh in this second. These Prashasti inscriptions contain valuable information about the personality of the kings, their conquests, their extension of the territories, their contribution to religion and various matters. Though they are in Prashasti nature, they are very helpful in comparison with the other sources available to know to reconstruct the comprehensive history of the ages. Afterwards, the inscriptions began to be composed in regional languages, particularly from 9th to 10th century onwards. The inscriptions, sanads, farmans of the Muslim dynasties were either in Arabic or Persian or in Urdu languages. Thousands of inscriptions are available for the medieval period to know about the history and culture of the medieval period. Besides the royal edicts, 
Donative records refers to gifts of money, cattle, land for religious purposes. These type of donative records regarding the land grants made by chiefs and princes are very important for the study of land system and administrative arrangements of the ancient and medieval periods. They also furnished us with the names of the kings, boundaries of the kingdoms and this information is useful for the confirmation of the dates and clues to many important events of history. The inscriptions of the private individuals are engraved in temples or images of stones. They have provided us information concerning dates of construction of the temples, the development of art and architecture and also the culture of different regions. Thus the inscriptions are available to the reconstruction of Indian history from the Mauryan age and we have number of inscriptions both royal as well as private records which they form an authentic and a reliable source of information to know about all its aspects. Besides the inscriptions, another archaeological material, numismatics also form an important source for the reconstruction of Indian history. Numismatic is the science of the study of coins. Before the coins were introduced, the barter system that is exchange of goods was prevalent in ancient India. Later, the coins made up of several metals like gold, silver, copper and other materials of different periods are discovered in various Indian subcontinent. The earliest coins so far available in India are Panchmarkar coins. Panchmarkar coins were the first coins made in silver and copper were in circulation during the time of Mahajanapadas. All the imported dynasties of ancient and medieval India had their own coinage. Most of them were issued by the rulers containing dates, figures, legends, gods, symbols, etc. The vast and variety of coins issued by the Indo-Greeks, Sakas, Shatavahanas, Kushanas and Guptas of ancient India help us to build up the history of respective dynasties. Besides the India coins, the flourishing of maritime trade and commerce in ancient India is attested by the discovery of Roman gold coins. The Delhi Sultans and Mughals in medieval India have introduced standardization in their currency. Thus, lakhs of coins which were issued in the medieval period by the dynasties are available plenty which they contain the names of the kings, the regnal years and various aspects related to coinage. In the medieval period, the British Indians developed the currency system. British Indian coins and currency contain the portraits of the kings or the queen of England, the year, the place of mint in different Indian languages. They form an authentic source not only to know about the prosperity of the Indian economy during the British period and also they contain the information about the rulers, the reigning period where it was minted. Besides the coins, the paper currency was also introduced by the Britishers in India which various types of currency is available for the modern age to know about the monetary transactions of the present day. With the availability of number of coins since the Mahajana period that is the 6th century BC up to the present day, these coins are also authentic source to know about the history of respective fields like the coins help us to fix the Indian chronology in different periods. The legends and the coins give information on the history of the languages and scripts of the period. The vast circulation of gold and silver coins of different periods testify the economic prosperity of India at that age. The area of circulation of coins is used 
generally to estimate the extent and frontiers of the respective empires. The kinds of Indo-Greek, Parthian, Saka and Kushana kings, their histories are known exclusively from their kinds. The depiction of deities and kinds provide information about the religious preferences of the kings, the uh, royal religious policy and the history of the cults. So far in our discussion, we have analyzed various sources, how they were recovered and these sources, how they were utilized for the reconstruction of ancient Indian history, medieval history and modern ages. Thus, the India have a bulk of source materials in various categories and these sources are authentic to know about the history, culture and heritage of India from the inception of man up to present day. In summing up, the careful collection of the materials derived from all these sources like texts, inscriptions, coins, material and monumental remains are useful for reconstructing the history and culture of India. All these sources of undoubted value which they throw light on the political, social, economic and cultural history in all respects. With this discussion, I hope you may understand the sources for the reconstruction of Indian history with some selected examples for better understanding you go through the e-text. Thank you.